There have been over a hundred Star Wars games, but only three titles in the Battlefront series. Kinda strange when the first two are among the best-selling Star Wars games ever made. EA wants to fix this problem, and DICE is certainly the developer to do it. But with only a teaser to go by, how will they use the power of consoles two generations beyond the last Battlefront? Until we see some actual gameplay, here are my opinions about where the war needs to go next. Battlefront 2 managed to pump the player count to 64, so that's obviously where we should start. If DICE wants to go even further, we have no objections. Scale has never been a problem in the Battlefront games. The maps are large and traversal options are plentiful. What needs to expand are the mission parameters. Simply playing King of the Hill or Deathmatch isn't going to cut it this time. No two wars in the Star Wars universe are ever the same, so the objectives on each map in Battlefront should be completely different. Thinning out the opposition should always be beneficial, obviously, but actual win conditions should vary. Maybe in one mission you free some prisoners or break out of prison yourself, and in another you destroy a stationary turret or some classified technology. Switch up our method of deployment as well. The option to spawn already in certain vehicles or drop in from the sky would help pick up the pace. Lots of skirmishes in Star Wars are fought in two places at once, on the moon of Endor and around the Death Star 2, for example. What if two 64-player matches were taking place at the same time, and the conditions of one affected the other? Dust514 has already made strides in this arena, connecting with the eternally starbound EVE Online. If taking out a shield generator on one map could allow starfighters to attack new areas on a completely separate map, or destroying a control station in space disabled certain droids on the planet's surface, it could turn the tide of each battlefield in unexpected ways. <laughs> Renegade Squadron, the last Battlefront game released, changed up the series' class structure. In Battlefront 1 and 2, you chose from a set of classes, but Renegade Squadron let you create your own from scratch, while also customizing your soldier's appearance. This is definitely the way to go moving forward. It would give hardcore fans the chance to look the way they wanted while sticking to their favorite faction, and there could be a mode that removed the extra flourishes for the purists that want to keep it close to the movies. Lightsabers made brief appearances in Battlefront 1, but 2 made Jedi playable. We'd love it if certain modes stacked the odds against these powerful players, similar to the give and take in Evolve, or how Arkham Origins pits thugs against Batman and Robin. Imagine 60 players against 4 Jedi. The top soldiers from each match could be spun on a wheel to determine who gets the Force in the next go-around. Finally, Battlefront has a history of bringing the movies to life like never before. They offered the most amusing opportunities to navigate any of the prequel environments, so it wouldn't be surprising if it gives us a few glimpses at areas we'll visit in Episode 7. It would seem the perfect game to kick off Disney's new vision of this galaxy far, far away. Running on Frostbite 3, developed by people responsible for some of the best multiplayer games of all time, Star Wars Battlefront shows a lot of promise. We don't want the series to just get bigger on the PS4 and Xbox One. We want way more modes than just Assault, Die, Repeat. Hopefully some of the explosive gameplay at this year's EA press conference will be in space. May the Force be with us.